Coming up next, Frank and Mary here in Framingham um, with me, Art Bergeron, and my co-host, Grace O'Donnell. Our guest today is Randy Aylesworth, the Assistant Director at the Callahan Center. This episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. And I'm Art Bergeron. Um, if you haven't seen this show, I'm an attorney. I do nothing but elder law. I work at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us, so everybody gets to do what they like, and I like this. Um, but this show is not about elder law. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. You may have seen them in presentations that I've done uh, in senior centers in the area. Uh, their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's in Framingham, they means they want to stay right here. Um, and so the, the point of this show is to help you know the people that you need to know and the programs that you need to know about uh, so that you can just be staying right here in Framingham. And that's why uh, I have this great co-host, Grace O'Donnell, who consistently gets great guests. So Grace, who is our guest today? Thanks, Arthur. I'm really excited to introduce you and our audience to Randy Aylesworth. He's the Assistant Director at the Callahan Center, and he's going to talk to us today about the Senior Property Tax Work-Off Program. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today. It's great to be back on my favorite show, The Frank and Mary Show, here in Framingham, and it's great seeing both of you again. You are becoming a regular here, Randy. You know, you may you may be able to, to audition for a co-host slot here at some point, you know. That sounds good. That sounds good. But both of you are doing great. So those would be big shoes to fill. Thank you. And the uh, senior property tax program uh, that we have in Framingham. So why don't I sort of give a, a little bit of an explanation as to what that program is all about. Uh, the Senior uh, Property Tax Work-Off Program in Framingham is a great way for a Framingham senior homeowner to be able to receive a tax credit on a future property tax bill. And the way it specifically works is that a senior in Framingham can actually work in a city department for a maximum of 78 hours. And while working in that department, they can earn up to a maximum $1,000 tax credit. So that is a very large tax credit when compared to many other programs in Framingham. And it, that is one of the reasons why it's very attractive. But it's a great relationship we've seen over the years for the Framingham senior. And for a lot of Framingham seniors, if I've seen many of the surveys that have come back some of the major areas for a lot of the Framingham seniors, their concerns mainly are in three main areas. Number one would be health care, the other would be housing, and the other would be transportation. So this program really covers the housing aspect of it. For many of our Framingham seniors, they've lived in the community for many, many years. And when they first moved here, their income was very different. Uh, so they were working, they had families. But when they retired, then all of a sudden their incomes became greatly reduced. And then trying to remain in the community became a challenge. And when you're trying to pay a property tax bill every three months, that can be that challenge that you're facing every 90 days. So this is legitimately a program that really truly helps those seniors that are eligible. And it's been wonderful. It's been very successful for the number of years that we've done it. Uh, the people who work in that program enjoy it immensely. Many of them want to return to the program every year. So it's a, a great program where it allows someone to have that tax credit and it also it benefits the city departments as well. And, and Randy, I'm sure that the, these folks are doing, uh, having all kinds of interesting jobs. I just wanted to reemphasize what you just said. I'm talking to clients regularly. Their issue is they've got they've they've got this wonderful house. They paid off their mortgage. 
They don't want to leave. Frank and Mary want to stay exactly where they are. And, but for many of them, next to their food bill, their tax bill is their biggest bill. You know, that it, and, and so, so to have a program that allows them to stay home, it's the greatest gift that, that you can give, really the greatest gift you can give. So it's just great. Yeah, it really is. And we're finding a lot of seniors truly want to remain at home. And they have spent years in that home. That's where they feel most comfortable. Yet they're running into that realistic challenge of how do I stay here now? And when people say, well, what are the solutions for seniors? And very often people put different ideas out there, but there really have not been many true solutions for people. And this is one of them. Uh, this allows them to earn that very substantial tax credit. And when they work in a city department, they could work for the police department in maybe a substation where they could be on duty in case someone comes into the substation. They could work for the Department of Public Works in their office uh, doing office work. They could work in the treasurer's office, which we always send many multiple uh, seniors too to work every year because their volume is very high and they work on a computer in the treasurer's office. They could work uh, delivering books and newsletters for the library or they can come down to the Callahan Center and we have a number of positions at the Callahan Center that they can uh, interact with other seniors and be in a variety of roles. So it's a great opportunity for the senior who brings a wealth of experience over the years and also it allows them to engage with the city employees and we're very fortunate in Framingham we have some great employees that work for the city and then in turn for the department they're gaining that worker that really brings all that experience and for a lot of our seniors we find that the work ethic that they have is excellent and it might be their generation but they're very dedicated to their job and so every week some of them may typically work about three hours in a department so if you worked in the treasurer's office let's say you may know that every thursday morning you're going to be working in the treasurer's office doing your three hours and then eventually you work your way up to uh, the point where you reach the maximum of 78 hours and uh, Randy, if I could just pose the question, I know right now we're in the midst of the uh, aftermath of the coronavirus, and I realize there might be some limitations on some of the departments that people can work in because we won't know how long that social distancing of keeping six feet oh, yeah. away from people might be. What are some of the other measures that you think people might need to take in some of these roles in other departments uh, to earn this tax credit? Well, I think some of the measures they have to take uh, following all the guidelines that we will put into place. And right now, the city of Framingham is working with each of the departments. So as we speak, City Hall is now being reopened, but only on a partial basis. Mm -hmm. So as we roll out the program, which this program runs from September to May every year. So we hope by then... Um, the restrictions could be a little bit different. We may be in a different phase at that particular point. We could be in phase four of the governor's plan at that point. But we know all the guidelines will be put into place, whether it's um, saying, you know, wearing gloves or wearing a mask or um, having protective glass, as we will have installed at the Callahan Center. So all those measures we expect will be in place by September when this program uh, starts to make sure that all of the seniors are well protected. Uh, so this is more of things are happening every week and changing. And I'm sure when we get closer to it, uh, the city of Framingham will provide me with all those guidelines. But uh, by September, I think we'll, we'll be okay. Uh, we'll have to see what the new normal is uh, right. by September. And, and how do people go about applying for this program, Randy? What are the steps they need to take? Well, uh, first of all, um, I can mention what the requirements are for people and then also um, your question regarding the application process. They sort of go hand in hand. Um, one of the, the basic eligibility requirements to be in this program would be that you have to be a Framingham senior um, age 62 and over or 
disabled and you would have to be a homeowner. You would have to live in your home to have lived in your home for at least the past five years. And you also have to reside in the property that you're actually paying taxes on. Now, those are some of the basic requirements. And I also should mention it's not only for homeowners, but also the spouses of homeowners as well. Then when you leave that basic requirement category, then there's an income requirement. And if your status is single, then your income requirement, you cannot have an annual gross income higher than $50,000 a year. If your status is being married, then your gross annual income that for the household cannot be greater than $60,000 a year. So very often with the program, what I find is the income requirements sometimes may uh, turn some people away. They may not qualify for that, where most people do qualify under the basic requirements. So that's something for people to consider those income requirements. And then the third piece is that people really need to be a fit for the particular role for the particular department that they're, um, that has an opening. So for example, in the treasurer's department, they may have a need for someone to have computer skills. Uh, so someone has to have some of those basic computer skills. If they don't, then I will make every effort to try to find them a position that sort of more matches their skill set. Maybe they're more comfortable as a greeter at the Callahan Center. Maybe they would like to work in the police substation uh, across from the La Cantina restaurant. So that may fit them a little bit better. So we always make every attempt to try to match people, but they, they do have to be a match uh, for that particular position so that it would work out. Now, regarding your question, Grace, regarding the application process, um, July 1st is the magic date. So what people do is they call the Callahan Center at area code 508-532-5980. And they will call the Callahan Center giving their name, their address, and requesting the Senior Property Tax work off Program application. We would then in turn mail that application out to a senior. The senior would get that application at home, complete the application, and then they would send back some accompanying documents. What they would send back would be a copy of their last property tax bill. They would send back a copy of their 2019 federal tax return. And they'd also send back a copy of their driver's license or a photo ID if they have that instead. Once they send that back and I specifically receive it at the Callahan Center, then I can sit down and review it. And I would contact each of the applicants uh, to let them know a status, whether they qualify, whether they don't. I can touch base with them over the phone. If they're brand new in the program, we always love to get brand new applicants, brand new seniors. We want everybody in the community to share in this particular program. So we always show preference to new applicants. When we get them, then I would set up an interview time, whether that's on a Zoom meeting, or maybe that might be on a phone call, whatever the applicant is comfortable with. And if they are a returning person, because many of our seniors love to get back into the program, and if they are, then that's okay as well. But we're always going to show preference for the new applicants. And then we'll go to the people that are repeating and come back. But it's funny how it works out. Many of the seniors um, want to get back in the program because they love it so much because they love their departments that they worked with. Mm -hmm. And they built a great relationship with their departments. And then on the department side, I always hear them say, please, have Doris come back. We want Doris <laughs> again. You know, please, I, I want Jim to come back in. He was fabulous. Yeah. So we have those requests as well. And that's how successful this program is, where there are departments who want the same seniors for years. But we do try to spread it out so that everyone has uh, an equal opportunity to get into the program. That's terrific. Yes. So it's, and it's great that the program is continuing, you know, and, 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 and that people are really trying to adapt. And, and it's, I would think especially for seniors, because I would think for seniors even trying to find 
like part-time work right now, the, the, the market's going to be terrible, right, in the, in, the, in, the, in the wake of all of the unemployment and stuff. So to give people this opportunity to be able to stay at home, it's just a big deal. I think it is, Arthur. It's going to be very interesting. Your point about the economy now, it, it always has been somewhat tough for a lot of our seniors to find just a right part-time job that they can supplement with everything else they do in retirement. But what is it going to be like now in this new economy where we have double-digit unemployment as of today? Um, now that's going to be a different environment for them to try to find that part-time job. And so many times in my office, people interview for this program, but they'll mention about, Randy, if you see any other job opportunities out there, can you sort of keep your ears open for me and right. keep your eyes open to see if you find anything for me? Can you help me? So I think your point about the economy now being a little bit tougher for folks may play out that way. And I think uh, this program is going, we have about 23 positions that will be open for this coming program. Once again, some would have to work up to 78 hours. And I think those are 23 that I definitely know are there, are going to be out there that people know that they can apply for and have a, you know, a decent chance of probably getting in. We'll have to see how many applicants that I received this year. But I think the economy may make things a little bit tougher for folks. So this program may be even more beneficial in the next few months. And, and can you give, I'm just curious, can you give a sense of, of the, typically of the number of, do you typically get oversubscribed for this program? So I just want to, for, pe for people who are thinking about applying, so they'd have a sense of, wh of whether if they apply, there's some a likelihood that they'd be getting, because it sounds like such an attractive program. I'm just asking. Yeah, part of it is we do get uh, a pretty fair number of people. So if we have, usually every year, we're looking to fill around the 20 to 30 range uh, for jobs mm -hmm. every year. The applicants usually come in, usually in that 40 range. Uh, every year. Um, so it's good for programs like this that we can get the word out there even more and just sort of market the program in the community. Uh, but we probably get around 40 people or so that apply every year. Sometimes it will fluctuate. But I always say to everyone, always send in your application. Just send it in and we'll see where it goes. People have been surprised where they sent it in. They said, I did not know that this was going to go anywhere. And then I end up getting this little job and they loved it and it actually served to really benefit them. So, and I would say to many seniors in Framingham, any of the programs, don't be hesitant to um, call and inquire about that program, whether it's through the Callahan Center with our senior property tax program, or whether you're calling the assessor's office to see, do you really apply? Do you really, are you eligible? for any of their uh, exemptions that they do offer. Um, if it's contacting the state of Massachusetts for a senior circuit breaker, um, put your name in for these things. Because I did have one senior who was very hesitant. She did it one year and she applied for my program, got into the program, and then she hesitantly applied for the senior circuit breaker, got that as well. She then contacted the assessor's office and found that there was a small exemption that she could qualify there. She got three things, yeah. three things that she was shy about ever applying for. So there is a tremendous benefit for the seniors. I say apply for the program and then I'll touch base with people to let them know if they're eligible. And I also talk through with people about their other options in the community mm -hmm. to really expand it beyond this program to help them out. <laughs> Sometimes we do find that people are eligible for other things in addition to things like the property tax work off program. Someone's income might be low enough that they could apply for food stamps and our social services staff can assist them with that or with the fuel assistance program that comes available in the fall. So sometimes, as you mentioned, encouraging people to ask the question, you never know what else might be available to you. These programs are put in place because people realize when people retire, their income is now limited. It's never going to increase by very much. And yet we all experience expenses going up in so many other areas every year. So 
you may not have been eligible for a program a year or two ago, but you might in fact be eligible for it this year. And why not help yourself um, if that program is available to you? Why not make use of it? That's a great, that's a great point. And just never say no to yourself. Yeah. Never say, I always tell you, don't, don't say no to yourself. Apply and find out and find out. And, and but it's got to be comforting for them, Grace, to have a person like Randy to be talking to. Absolutely. Who clearly, you know, clearly is willing to really look at all of what their issues are and try to figure out how they can, how they can be addressed, you know, because yep. I think that's, that's some of the hesitant also, you know, you, you know, you get, you get concerned about, Oh, is this a big bureaucracy? They haven't dealt with you, you know, with you folks before. They don't realize you, know, you folks are there to help. You exactly. folks are there to help. You're not, you're not there to say no. You're there to try to figure out how to pe how people can get to yes. Right. And Randy does. So Randy, this is, I'm sorry. Randy does a great job of figuring out what people's skills are, where their strengths are. And he does a terrific job of matching those with the department needs that are out there. He, he does a, a great job of finding a good fit for people. It helps to know the people in those departments as well. And uh, so we really try to find that right fit. And like Grace mentioned, that really is a key because when you find that senior matches with that department so well, and those are the ones that we get those requests on a yearly basis, can you please have that person come back? Yeah. So really getting a sense, um, I try to really pay attention to what their skill sets are, to what they would be comfortable with and then try to find just the right place for them to, to match up. Fortunately, down the Callahan Center, we have a number of positions at the Callahan Center. So whether they work as a greeter or whether they worked in our fitness center, um, there are a number of roles that people have come down and felt very comfortable at the Callahan Center. Uh, we had one person that I brought on as a greeter, and that turned into a, sort of a partial role where they were able to make calls for our social services uh, part of our uh, Callahan Center. So now she does the two things. And we all have to share this particular senior. And because she has that skill set where she was on the telephone for years, and now she's on the phone for our social services group, which is totally different from working as a greeter reporting to me at the right. Callahan Center. So I'm always looking for, and we're always looking um, to make sure we can maximize the opportunities for people in the community. So whether it's the senior property tax work off program through the assessor's office, senior circuit breaker, whatever it may be, like Grace had mentioned, we're always trying to pay attention to that to make sure it works for our seniors in the best possible way. And I can tell you from walking, my own experience walking into the senior center, you always seem to have volunteers that are, that are in a good mood. They're consistently, right? You just get happy people there, which makes a big difference. It just, it makes a big difference. Now I want to, Randy. That, that, that's been a, a great summary of the program. I know that I, that before we end, though, before we finish, I wanted to, to give Grace a chance to talk a little bit about the census. The, I know she wanted to kind of update folks on the census. And and uh, Grace, where where are you on that? I know this has been a big issue for you. We've talked about it over the last several months. Yeah, the census response time has been extended out to October thirty first. We are encouraging people to go to my2020census.gov and complete that survey. If you received a letter in the mail from the census and you don't know where that letter is, it's okay. You can go onto the census website and just by entering your address, you can complete that census information. It takes maybe five to 10 minutes per person to complete that. And if you're having difficulty, if you don't have a computer to access it online, there is also a phone number that you can call. I would encourage anybody with questions about the census, give us a call at the Callahan Center. We can guide you through it. And in these times especially, it's critical that all of us get counted because the money that gets distributed to the cities and states for the next 10 years is based on the number of people who complete the census this year. So if you haven't filled that out yet, please do it. Please ask your family and friends if they have done it and encourage them to, to sign up as well. And I'll promise you that Frank and Mary are going to be out there wanting to sign up because they want to be, they want to be in Framingham for the next 10 years, right? And they want to be, get, they want to be able to take advantage of the programs 
that the federal government supports and they support a lot of programs, but it's based on those numbers. Yes. So it's a really, it's a really big deal. Mm -hmm. So listen, R Randy, I just want to, I, once again, I really want to thank you for, 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 for really taking this time and, and Grace to thank you once again. You always find these, you know, people, we, although once again, we don't want Randy on too much, you know, we don't want him kind of sneaking into my job as a co-host here, you know, <laughs> yeah. but we really, we really appreciate it. Your, you know, your coming in and Grace, I always appreciate your, your doing this. Thank and you. Thank, thank you, Arthur, for making this possible for all of us to share with other people. Great. So thank, thank you, you all for watching thank and thank you, Randy. And we will look forward to seeing you all in the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you. <laughs>